Osnat Kalik is the daughter of legendary Jerusalem Mayor Teddy Kalik. I'm joined by Mayor Kalik's daughter Osnat, herself an accomplished artist and well-known figure in her father's city. Osnat, your father's legacy could be said to be measured in how often one hears people ask, what would Teddy do? Would he be proud of the Jerusalem that we see today? I think he would be proud and of many things in Jerusalem, the cultural activity, uh, the buildings, the development of buildings, of roads and housing. Uh, the young generation who is very active now in Jerusalem, culturally and otherwise, which is great to see. Um, on the other hand, I think he would have been disappointed with the um, traces of racism that we see now in Jerusalem. Uh, the tension now is much higher than used to be on his time between the different groups of Jerusalem. He put a lot of time and efforts in order to make all the citizens of Jerusalem feel good in Jerusalem, and they, he believed they should have equal um, rights. His mentor was Theodor Herzl, who visioned Jerusalem. They both uh, were born in Hungary and grew up in Vienna. Vienna of their time was a cosmopolitan cultural center where people came from all over the uh, Europe, at least. So um, my father, just as Theodor Herzl, visioned Jerusalem as a cosmopolitan cultural center as Vienna, but in addition, as it's the capital of the Jewish people, he believed, and so did the Theodor Herzl, that it should carry a message of peace, of tolerance, and of pluralism as the capital of the Jewish people to the whole world. What's missing from the vision of Jerusalem today? Um, well, as I said, there is no equality in services between different uh, religious groups, and um, that's one thing. There is um, there is racism here. I mean, we do hear of violent uh, attacks from time to time, uh, of Arabs and so on. So I don't think they um, they represent. They really present the reality in Jerusalem. There is also tolerance, there, but these things should not happen. There is tolerance and there is a kind of coexistence, but there is also some racism and hatred, which should uh, should not be here or uh, building in the Arab neighborhoods such as Silwan or Sheikh Jarrah. My father opposed it and he was the first to demonstrate when the first uh, settlers went into Silwan. He was still mayor but he could not prevent their settling in Silwan. Uh, but he went and demonstrated. He was joined by many people such as Yudha Michai and other supporters. Um, he thought we should not humiliate the Arab uh, citizens of Jerusalem. It's useless. Why should we go and move into their homes, their houses, in which they are living for hundreds of years? Osna, do you feel that there can be a happy medium? That there are different opinions, there are different ways of people seeing Jerusalem, and, and at the end of the day, who sort of holds uh, ownership of Jerusalem is really the big fight. Yeah, I think uh, I, I think we can all live together. I, re I truly believe in it, um, and uh, respect each other. We don't have to live. I mean, everyone should have his own uh, life. Every community should be allowed to live quietly and not harassed or uh, trying to be controlled by by others. That's what my father believed in, and I think during his long term, because he was. Since 67 until uh, 93, it's uh, 26 years, where he was mayor of the United City. And when I meet uh, citizens uh, from different groups, they all told me, during Teddy's time, we felt we have respect. And now we don't feel it anymore. Um, so he treated everyone with, with respect. And um, I believe this can... Uh, happen again. I mean, let's say uh, the Orthodox issue. He wanted to respect the Orthodox. They are part of our city. So how did he approach this problem of their wanting the city to be uh, religious? Uh, on the other hand, secular wanting to have their own cultural life in Jerusalem. My father wanted to um, open uh, cinemas on Friday and Shabbat because in, in every big city that's how things go. He solved the problem by opening the Cinematheque 
showing films uh, on the weekend in the Cinematheque, which is far away from the Orthodox uh, community, so it didn't bother them. So you can solve things if you're a, a bit more sensitive and um, considerate. And definitely, I, I'm sure people can live together because I have witnessed it for years. So. Women's rights and the women's rights movement has been a powerful tool, particularly in the Middle East. And Israel is no different. How mm. has it changed from the time that your father was mayor, the time that you grew up? And looking at Jerusalem as an example today in terms of women's roles, women's employment, um, well, women are uh, women have more senior roles. You see more women in senior roles. That's on one hand. Also in the municipality and in other big uh, uh, business uh, companies and so on. In the government as well, or in the Knesset. That's one side of the of this issue. On the other hand, the problem today I feel, which did not exist. Uh, let's say 20 years ago or even 10 years ago, and which is becoming uh, more and more f difficult, is the, um, the Orthodox community's will to impose their um, ethics, which means that women are not to be seen, women are uh, inferior, and so on. Um, so if they adapt these um, behavior in on their in their neighborhood, I don't think we should impose anything else. I mean, but I don't feel that buses or other advertisements on buses and so on, which uh, include women, shouldn't be seen in the in Jerusalem totally. I mean, that's uh, already uh, very worrying and disturbing that they try to impose their values in neighborhoods which are not orthodox. That bothers me as a Jerusalemite. The Eged Bus Company, as a business, had a problem, they were getting damaged when they had ads which included women. So they decided because of what was happening that the only way to deal with the issue, because the courts were looking at it in terms of having equal rights between women and men, have no faces now of men or women. Do you think that this is a good move or a bad move? Oh, I think it's a very bad move for us as a society. It's, uh, it's trying to impose a primitive or um, yeah, primitive uh, values uh, on the liberal and modern society, which we want to be, and with some success, unfortunately. And uh, I don't think we should agree to this. As I said, in uh, I think the Orthodox in their neighborhoods don't have to have these ads, including human figures, if they believe it's forbidden or they don't want to have it. But they can't impose this on our on the secular. Uh, or less religious parts of Jerusalem, they, uh, and we shouldn't allow this. I think the, the world views Israel in the same manner, perhaps, that people like me, Israelis, view it. The world is confused, I'm confused. On the one hand, it's a very modern, cultured country with um, great science achievements, uh, powerful, uh, doing very well economically, scientifically great, great country, the greatest success in, of the 20th uh, century for sure, the greatest historical achievement of the 20th century is Israel, if you look at the history of the 20th century, is the uh, building of a country, f I mean, it, we are just 65 years old, and look how much we have achieved. That's one part uh, which is very impressing. And uh, the other part is uh, the fanaticism, the violence, the racism that are starting to grow here and root. And I, I think people are confused by that. The aggression of the country towards the occupied population, uh, these are contrasts. Uh, these two things don't go together. At the moment, Israel has been claiming, you know, they have attempted many times to draw the Palestinians back into the negotiations. It's not working. So if you can't bring a partner back in, Palestinians are claiming it's the other way around. But if you can't bring a partner back in to negotiations, how do you solve the problem? I don't believe you can't bring the partner back into the negotiations. I believe you can. I don't think uh, the present government is really trying to negotiate. I think they want to keep the status quo. Not only that, but they keep on building and uh, reinforcing settlements 
which is against any agreements we made with uh, the Palestinians in the past, and which uh, which ref which is a say like we want war, we don't want peace because uh, the, the we go on provoking you more and more and more. Well, we have succeeded. We have achieved. Um, I think we we got uh, almost to an agreement in the past. Let's say during Eld Olmert's time. Um, so we should do what we've done, uh, what we have done, what uh, Yitzhak Rabin has uh, started to do, but was stopped brutally by fanatics. But this is the procedure we have to go through. And uh, yes, negotiating. Yes, we have to speak with our neighbors, although we don't like them. You know, we don't have to love them. We don't have to like them. That's what my father said. But we have to live with them. As an artist, yeah. do you ever combine art and politics. You definitely are not shy in terms of speaking your mind, so how do you mix the two? Um, I have a plan now. I uh, lost a very nice friend at the Lebanon War at 1982. He was a great person. He, he was killed at the age of 22. He never went abroad even. He was a very wise young man. No one remembers him today, of course, since then thousands of young men were killed um my i plan now to make um to organize and curate an exhibition in his uh, for in his commemoration for his memory which will include uh, leading artists leading israeli artists like adines who uh, made the great photograph of the last supper which is response to the last supper of leonardo da, Vin da vinci but uh, depicts soldiers having their last supper. And so, and other artists, there's uh, many songs written about war, the war by people who were in, let's say, in the Lebanon war and witnessed and uh, experienced the horror of war. Osnat Kalak, thank you very, very much. You're welcome.